Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Wednesday, March the 28th. Joan Stack is here, a walking, literally, a walking encyclopedia from the State Historical Society. Good to have you, yeah, Joan. Yeah, it's good to be here. I, I love I love having you on because you come on and you, you just know so much about the topic and I can just sit and listen to you. <laughs> well, I just love the what we work with. We work yeah. with the images that relate to history. Now, today you're talking about a... Uh, uh, a, a show that's going on being held in Jefferson City, right? That's right. We have a exhibit of cartoons from the State Historical Society currently on display at the Rosier Gallery uh, next to the State Capitol. It's just to the east of the Capitol, mm-hmm. and it's run by the State Museum, and they have collaborated with us for a great exhibit to commemorate the centennial of the U.S. entering World War One. Now, how long will this show be open? It's actually open for quite a while. It closes on May 19th, and so people have the opportunity to see it. It will be running, uh, the Rosier Gallery is open every Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 4. So mm-hmm. it's free and open to the public. And how many How many cartoons? We have 16, uh, uh, sorry, we have 26 cartoons 26 in the exhibit. 26 cartoons. And they deal with uh, different phases of the war. We have a section devoted to the war cartoons actually produced during the war, then cartoons produced after the armistice, then during the Versailles conference, and then the post-Versailles uh, cartoons, the dealing with the whether or not the United States was going to sign the Versailles Treaty and the League of Nations and mm-hmm. Wilson's attempts to get that passed. And then finally, we have just a few cartoons dealing with the aftermath of the war many years later during the Depression and World War I, II and, era. And these, these were all editorial cartoons in newspapers, right? That's right. These all come from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Oh, they were all the St. Louis Post-Dispatch? Yes. So they were drawn by the Post-Dispatch local artists? Yes. Yes, and that man was Daniel Fitzpatrick. He won the Pulitzer Prize twice. He is uh, considered one of the great American cartoonists. Uh-huh. And he was in his 20s when he did the cartoon you're holding up right now. Uh, so during World War I, he was just getting started, and he wa- really uh, produced a sensation because his cartoons were really, really powerful. This one is right after the armistice period, and... Uh, Uh, Woodrow Wilson has given a speech in favor of his ideas, his 14 points, which include the League of of Nations. And part of the speech he talks about, uh, we have to be uh, in tune with the tides of history or else we will be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And so Fitzpatrick produced a cartoon to remind people of what happens to you if you're overwhelmed by the tides of history. So this cartoon actually represents three thrones, the throne of the German Empire, the throne of the uh, the, uh, Austria-Hungarian Empire, and the throne of the Russian Empire, which all were there at the beginning of the war in 1914 and gone in 1918. So we're reminded of the seismic change that took yeah. place. The uh, great, during, it says the great tides of the world rise and those who stand in their way are overwhelmed. Yeah, so Wilson is warning us that we have to modernize our way of government, our way, our uh, fashions of diplomacy, the way we work uh, internationally, or else we will be overwhelmed by the tides of history just as the Russian Empire, the German Empire, and the Australian so Hungarian Empire were overwhelmed yeah. during the war. So it's a real reminder that World War I represents this period where the world changed. This seismic shifts in the nature of power, the nature of global relationships. And I think we sometimes forget that. World War I is sort of a difficult war to understand, but it was a, a war in which great changes took place. And then we had World War and II. And then we have World War II, which puts, which we cre- have even more changes. And yeah. so, so these are periods where the world that we live in now was created. Uh, you know, one of the things that happened during that period were all those empires were broken up and divided among the winners. The, mm-hmm. So the British Empire actually grew. Now, the next cartoon you're holding up is one of these cartoons that deals with the aftermath of World War One, And this cartoon was published as the Nazis were uh, rising to power in Europe. And so 
what Fitzpatrick is reminding us with this cartoon, which shows a World War I soldier standing on the world, but it's becoming deflated yeah. with his weight. It's, it's, it's buckling under his weight. Uh, and Almost that, collapsing. That's right. So, and, the, uh, and the caption reads, 12 million men. So it's a reminder of the cost of war to the global economy, to the human resources, how, how we need to worry about a, another world war creating the same sort of effect on the world, which of course it did. So, world War II. So it was very uh, prescient to that, that yeah. cartoon. You know, when, when you think of this, you wonder, are we learning from history? Or are we turning a blind eye to what has already happened and what could happen in the future. Yeah, I, you know, that's one of the things that is really powerful about this show because uh, I was it. We had an opening a few weeks ago, and there was a man who came in. He was shaking his head, and he was saying, you know, it's these, these cartoons could be published today. Some of them, mm -hmm. they are so uh, dealing with the costs of war, the the costs of lives, and whether it's worth it or not. You know, all of these people died, and for what ultimately? Mm -hmm. And could we, what is there another way to do this? Do we have to use up all these lives and all of our resources? Yeah. Our resources of humanity. Yeah. Do we have to do that? Yeah. Uh, you, you have to ask yourself this question. And sometimes if if we don't learn from history, we are doomed. Did to someone said to, to repeat ourselves? <laughs> That's right, yes. Yeah. And so what's really interesting, I think, about a, an exhibition of cartoons is you can learn about history in a way that is sort of... I don't I hesitate to say fun, but maybe it's a little easier to get some of these ideas when you see them visually represented by these brilliant cartoonists who can capture an idea mm -hmm. in just a few images. And, um, and so hopefully this is a way that people, maybe young people who are not as used to reading history books can come and look at these cartoons and get those messages yes. that you're talking about. And that will be uh, where again? It's at the Rozier Gallery in Jefferson City. Right next to the Capitol. Right next to the Capitol, okay. uh, near the Amtrak station. All right. <laughs> and w this was all done by the same cartoonist with the uh, St. Louis Post-Dispatch? Yes. Uh, Daniel Fitzpatrick, one okay. of our great cartoonists. All right. And you know, we have a great cartoonist here with Dark Owl, too. That's right. He is, he's, he's top notch. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank Thank you so much. And if people want to come by the State Historical Society, you're open. We are open Tuesday through Saturday as well, but we okay. open at 8 o'clock in the morning and close at uh, 4.30. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you, Joan Stack. Something you'd like to hear or see, I'd love to hear from you. Pepper P, Missouri.edu. Thank you for listening. Have yourself a, a nice morning and a great day. Bye-bye.